Hello everyone. Are you curious about the PhD program? Then watch this video. Hello everyone, my name is Jonathan. I'm a hardware engineer in the Silicon Valley. As you can tell from the video title, I'm going to be talking about the PhD experience. Believe it or not, I can't tell the number of times I've been asked about the PhD program over the years. From basic questions like, what is a PhD program? To more personal questions like, should I do a PhD program? Is it worth it? And so I've decided to answer all of these questions and immortalize it in this YouTube video. That way, if in the future I get asked about the PhD program again, I can tell them to watch this video. To give some background, I graduated last year with my PhD at Stanford in electrical engineering, and I specialized in MRI hardware. That's medical imaging. To give a quick summary of this video so you know that I plan things out, I'm going to start off by talking about what a PhD program is. I will talk about the differences between college and PhD academic life. I'm sure a lot of you out there have a good grasp of what college is like, so comparison can be helpful. I will talk about the pros of doing a PhD. I will talk about the cons of doing a PhD. And then I'll end with a conclusion. Now the PhD is a very big topic, so it's unlikely I'll be able to cover everything about it. If there's anything important you think I missed, or if you got questions or any clarification, leave them in the comments section below. So what is a PhD program? A PhD program is basically a multi-year research program that you do at a university. Typically, you do it after you finish college or your master's degree. Some people go straight into the PhD from college or their master's. Other people work for a few years after college and then go into the PhD. It depends. When you arrive on campus as a new PhD student, one of the first things you're going to be doing is finding a PhD research advisor so that you can join their lab and do research for them. A research advisor can be either a professor or a research associate. Throughout this video, I might accidentally say professor instead of research advisor but understand that a research advisor doesn't necessarily have to be a professor. Your research advisor will provide you with mentorship, guidance, financial support, and you as a PhD student in return will work for their lab doing research. And that will involve doing things like reading papers, doing experiments, collecting data, publishing papers. Your research advisor will then take the results of your research and use them to write research grants. And these research grants are basically proposals that are sent to different organizations asking them to give your lab money. If your proposals are successful, these organizations will provide your lab with multi-year financial packages, money. And this money will be used to fund you, other students, your experiments, the lab facilities, and it basically keeps the lab going. So there's a symbiotic relationship between you, the PhD student, and your PhD advisor. After a few years of doing research and publishing your results, eventually your PhD advisor will give you the opportunity to graduate. Either that or you will be begging your advisor to let you graduate. In order for you to graduate, you have to do something called write a thesis. And a thesis is a book that includes a culmination of the research you've been doing the past few years as a PhD student. Typically, your thesis has to have some sort of a theme that ties all of your research together. After you write your thesis, you're going to do something called defend your thesis. One quick caveat about Stanford, Stanford EE department actually allows you to defend your thesis before you actually write it. How is this possible? Well, at Stanford, they do what they want. And I suspect that a few other schools are like that as well. In order to defend your thesis, you basically have to present the research done in your thesis to a committee of professors. And after watching your talk, this committee of professors will choose whether or not to pass you as a PhD student. If you are successful, and many are, you will get your fancy PhD degree, you get to call yourself a doctor, and then you're on your way and you're free. Sunshine and rainbows, the world is perfect. Now by the end of the PhD, you are an expert in whatever field or niche that you studied. Now understand that when you enter the PhD program as a new student, you are allowed to enter any topic that you would like even topics where you know little or nothing about. And after many years of studying that topic, you build yourself up from a noob to an expert in that field. So by doing a PhD program, not only does it allow you to become an expert in a specific field, that process of building yourself up from a novice to an expert also has the side effect of making you a better learner. So that in the future, if you choose to enter another new topic that you know nothing about, you have the confidence to build yourself up to be proficient at it. 
Now I'm going to talk about the differences between the college academic experience versus a PhD academic experience. I'm not going to get into the social aspect of PhD life because there is none. A typical college student spends a majority of their time taking courses, trying to do well in their classes, and getting good grades. On the other hand, when you're a PhD student, while you will have an opportunity to take classes, your main focus as a PhD student is to do research. And so the differences between the college experience versus the PhD experience boils down to the differences between the nature of taking courses versus doing research. So I'm going to highlight a few points of contrast between the two. One big difference between doing research as a PhD student versus taking courses as a college student is that when you're a PhD student, your schedule can seem less predictable and your progress can sometimes be slower. I'll explain. Typically on the first day of taking a class, you're going to get a course schedule. And the course schedule basically tells you precisely what topics you're going to be learning every single week. In the course of just a semester or a quarter, you're often able to cover 50 to 100 years of mankind's discoveries, sometimes maybe even more. And the reason you're able to do that in your classes is because in a class, you're basically learning about things that have already been discovered. However, in research, while there are times when you have to learn about the past, a lot of the time is spent in unknown territory where you're trying to answer questions that nobody knows the answers to. And so things go a lot slower and things can be less predictable. It becomes much harder to precisely schedule what you're going to be doing week to week. For instance, you're going to be doing experiments. Sometimes things blow up. Sometimes you get results that you don't understand and you have to pivot directions. And so things are a little less predictable during research as a PhD student. At the same time though, there is a little bit more flexibility and freedom in your schedule. You can choose where you want to go and what you want to study. And that segues into the next difference between college classes versus PhD research. In that when you're doing research, not only do you have to answer questions, but you also have to choose what questions it is you want to answer. When you're taking classes, you're given assignments, midterms, finals, and it's usually the professor giving you these questions and you as a student have to answer them. However, when you're doing research in a lab as a PhD student, you are also responsible for deciding what questions you want to answer and what direction you want to go in. In some cases, especially when you join a lab that's relatively new, you actually have to go out and find out what are the important questions that people are thinking about in your field of interest. And sometimes finding the questions to answer can be half of the work. And so you have some control over the direction that you want to go and what topics you're interested in looking into. So that can be a plus for some people for the freedom, but it can also be kind of scary given the added responsibility. And of course your advisor will be there to help you along the way. And the last point of contrast I want to mention to differentiate college versus the PhD experience is that the information that you have to sift through when you're doing research is much more vast and unorganized compared to the information that you're going to be learning in your course. You'll find that in most courses that you take, a lot of the information that you are learning is going to be in either your course notes or your assigned textbooks. On the other hand, when you're doing research, not only do you have to spend time looking through books and maybe course notes that are relevant to your research, you also have to look at research articles that would require you to look at databases such as IEEE, PubMed. These are databases that I would look through for my particular field. And out of all of this data, you have to pick out the pieces of information that you need in order to solve your problem. And so to end this discussion on this PhD college comparison, the PhD requires you to take more initiative organizing your schedule, finding the right resources and data that you need, asking the right questions, and so this may require you to spend a little more energy managing yourself compared to being in college. And now I'm going to talk about reasons why I enjoyed the PhD program. And these might also be reasons why you might consider a PhD program too. First of all, you get the opportunity to work with a research advisor. And to me, that was great. The fact that you get to work with a research advisor is a fantastic opportunity. Whether it's a professor or a research associate, these research advisors are among the best researchers in the world, and you get to learn from them. Many of them are also really great teachers, and they love to see their students grow. Understand though, whatever PhD program you choose to do at whatever school or department, 
Make sure that you can find professors that you want to work for and are a good fit for you. Because you have professors of many different flavors. Some professors are very hands-on, some professors are very hands-off. Some professors are world-renowned experts in their field, while other professors are fairly new to the area. And that's very possible because some people choose to do their PhDs in one area, and after they graduate and get a faculty position, they decide they want to do something else. And you also want to make sure that your advisor is excited about funding a topic that you want to do research in. Now, I was very lucky because my research advisors were world-renowned experts in the field I was interested in, which was MRI hardware. And they're very supportive of me through the ups and downs of the PhD, and I learned a lot about research from them. So whatever PhD program you apply for, if you can find a professor or professors who you think would match well with you, then that's fantastic. Another thing that I really enjoyed about having done the PhD is I think I came out as a much better learner. I touched on this before, but I think having done the PhD, I'm a lot more comfortable trying to answer questions in topics that I know nothing about. I think the process of having to do research and scope out articles and trying to find pieces of information that I needed to help me with solving problems uh, helped a lot in teaching me to become a better learner. And you can easily imagine that being a widely applicable and useful skill. For instance, I still have friends who sometimes ask me questions about classes that I haven't even taken before. And I can often help them. I'm able to go out there and scope out resources and try and find the information we need to answer the questions. I also feel like I'm able to perform better during my internships. There are many instances where I would look through research articles to confirm strange results that I see in the data that I'm getting. So I definitely feel a lot more comfortable trying to find answers and problem solve, even in areas that I'm not really familiar with. And that can be a skill that you can improve on even outside PhD program. However, in my particular case, I feel like having done the PhD program, it's definitely improved uh, this skill for me. Not only could the PhD program improve your ability to learn how to learn and your research skills, the PhD program is also an opportunity for you to know if you even want to pursue a career related to research. As a student, you might even have opportunities to be involved in the grant writing process. So it will give you like a first hand taste as to whether you enjoy the academic experience. Not only that, there are some jobs and positions out there that require you to have a PhD anyway. For instance, a lot of faculty positions out there require you to have a PhD. Some research positions in industry would also require you to have a PhD. So the PhD program is a way to explore this particular type of career option. Another great plus about doing the PhD program is occasionally you get to leave the school bubble to attend research conferences. Obviously, this is before Corona, but sometimes at these conferences, you get to meet people who are also really famous in the field. You might be able to meet that person who wrote that paper that you read. You can meet like the Ariana Grande of medical imaging. And during these conferences, you can talk with people who are doing research on similar topics. You can network, you can form collaborations. So it's a great way to meet people. And if you're lucky, sometimes these conferences are held in exotic locations. Like I got to visit Milan, Paris, Singapore, and sometimes you get to travel out afterwards. Like me and my lab mates went to Japan right after Singapore. So in essence, you could travel the world for free. It's like being a model, except not. So yes, networking and traveling opportunities. All right, now I'm gonna get into the sad part of this video. And I'm gonna be talking about reasons that could discourage you from doing the PhD. One very obvious drawback of doing the PhD program is it takes a really, really long time. On average, it takes five or six years, and that's if things go well. In some cases, it can take longer, and some people spend many years doing the PhD, and they end up having to drop out for whatever reasons. They couldn't publish enough, uh, they ran out of funding, anything could happen. One thing you can do to avoid spending many years and getting no results is to speak with your advisor and make sure that you have a few uh, lower risk projects with a higher probability of success, and don't just have a bunch of high risk projects. Of course, it's up to you, but that's just like one potential tip. But regardless of that, the PhDs take a long time. Assuming that you go straight to a PhD from college, likely you will be in your late 20s or even your 30s by the time you're done with the PhD. So in essence, you're giving up your 20s. So if you have any other uh, time-sensitive career ambitions, for instance, playing in the NFL, you want to figure out how to schedule that PhD into your life. Another uh, drawback of the PhD, if you will, the PhD is not a smart financial decision. 
That's one of the first things that my advisor told me when I joined the PhD program. I'm not saying that doing the PhD will make you poor. Likely your starting salary coming out with a PhD will be higher than it would be if you came out with a master's. But if you think about it, those five or six or more years that you are spending doing the PhD program are years that you could have been spent at a job in the real world, getting promoted, getting raises. But as a PhD student, you will be making a student stipend that is only a fraction of what you would be making if you got a job in the real world. So even with that bump in salary after having gotten the PhD, uh, it's not necessarily enough to easily make up for those years that you weren't working in a real job. There are exceptions out there. Uh, some people have PhD projects that turn into startups that can make them lots and lots of money, but that's not necessarily a typical case. So in summary, the PhD is not a money move. Another point that doesn't get talked about much, and it's not even really a big deal, I think, is the PhD could potentially slow down your maturity as a human being. Especially if you go straight from college to a PhD, you're basically living inside a school bubble for an extra several years. And in some cases, you're still gonna be living on campus in the school dorms, eating in the school dining halls. And so being in that school bubble does isolate you from the real world for an extra several years, potentially. Again, I don't think this is a really big deal. I just don't want you to be surprised when you graduate with your PhD and you're looking around at everyone and you realize, why is everyone like my age, but so much more mature? All right, one quick note that I also have to bring up. If you hate the idea of doing research, you hate the idea of learning, and you hate everything you've heard about the PhD program, but you really want to do the PhD just for the degree, I would strongly advise you to reconsider. Again, it's your life, you can do whatever you want, but I don't believe that the motivation that comes from getting this piece of paper is enough to keep you going through the marathon that is the PhD. Rather, you should be focusing on what skills you can improve during the journey. And ultimately, once you're in the workforce, your degree alone is not gonna matter that much. Sure, having a PhD is nice for making a good impression or on a resume, but when you join a company that wants to succeed, they're not gonna value you based on the degree you have or the school you go to. They're gonna value you based on the quality of work that you put out and your passion in what they do. And that's gonna be the same for any company that you join that wants to do well. So I recommend you focus on what you can improve on yourself during this PhD as opposed to the degree that you get at the very end. All right, that's enough on that. The PhD is an opportunity to work with world-class faculty and other really smart students doing cutting edge research. And this is one of those rare opportunities where you're actually paid to do this. And you can do research on any topic that you want. A lot of universities out there, they have labs that are state of the art. And I know in this video, I talked a little bit about you know, the PhD not being a smart financial decision, but rather than focusing on how much money the PhD program is gonna cost you, you should focus on, is the PhD worth the time that I'm giving up for it? Because the money you can eventually make back, I think. On the other hand, the time, once it's gone, it's gone. So if you're considering doing a PhD, you should weigh all these things. And you should talk to more people. Talk to professors, most of them have PhDs. Talk to other PhD students. You can talk to people who decided not to finish the PhD. Everyone's perspective is valuable. You should take all of these together and uh, make a decision. I hope this video was at least somewhat useful and interesting to you. If you have questions, leave them in the comment section below and I can try and answer them. Good luck and see you next time.